Okay, this is the next video on amides and their chemical properties. Alright, so this is what we're going to be learning about. Um, not many reactions of amides, okay, it's not one of the major topics in um, the syllabus, so we'll just go quickly through it. All right. So, how do you produce amides? Amides are produced by reacting a carboxylic... Uh, Mr. Lim, you learn how to English. A carboxylic acid and an ammonia, producing an amide and a water molecule. So let's have a look. So let's make some ethan amide. So let's draw the ethan amide first. And then let's discuss how it was made. Okay, so here you have ethan amide. It was produced with a carboxylic acid and an ammonia. So the carboxylic acid provides the carbon chain. Okay, so here's your carboxylic acid, right? Ethanoic acid. And you're going to add in an ammonia to it. Okay, so might even even draw that out as a NH3. Okay, so there's your ammonia, there's your ethanoic acid, right? And it's going to, what you're going to do is you're going to take off that OH there and take off that hydrogen there. And that's going to form the water. And then this part here is going to attach onto that bond there, making that NH2, right? So that is uh, how you make amides, all right, uh, via the carboxylic acid and the ammonia. And if you think about it, right, this is a acid and this is a base, and so therefore you're going, this is effectively the salt of those two things, all right? Um, I guess in the way that it's different to a salt is that this is actually a covalent molecular substance as opposed to an ionic substance, all right? Um, but yeah, don't worry about that too much. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so amides can undergo hydrolysis reactions in the presence of a catalyst to form ammonia and carboxylic acid, and it's effectively the opposite of um, the production of amides. So how do you hydrolyze ethan amide? Oh, well, you just take it apart and put it back to where it was. All right. So that means that that, with a little bit of water, will go back to uh, the ethanoic acid as well as the ammonia. Okay. And so that's effectively the opposite. Since that's a weak, this is a weak uh, acid base. All right, it's effectively a double arrow. Okay, but it's the opposite. Um, okay, it can produce carboxylic acids and ammonia, which are both weak things. All right. Um, then finally, amides themselves are amphiprotic with the ability to accept and donate a proton. So let's have a look here. Oh, whoops. Okay, well, okay, so we've got ethan amide. Let's do that. Uh, my pen looks different. I don't know why it's making these short strokes. Okay, so um, that is your ethan amide. All right, it can accept the proton. If it accepts a proton, it's going to go on to the NH2, forming an NH3, okay, making a positive ion. So that's uh, if it accepts a proton. And a bit of, sorry, it accepts. Otherwise, you'll get confused with acids, all right? And if it donates a proton, right, it's going to donate it from, oh my goodness, how can it donate? All right, it's going to donate that hydrogen to make it a, oops, ah, it's going to donate a hydrogen to make that one a negative charged substance there, all right? So, this is an unusual structure, so don't worry about too much about it, right? However, uh, what you should realize is that this one, when it accepts a proton, it's in uh, acidic conditions. So the acidic conditions force it to accept the proton, right? Wait, no, that's not, yeah, that's right, yep. And then this is in basic conditions here where it's forced to donate a proton, okay? All right, so if it's in basic conditions, it will donate. If it's in acidic conditions, it will accept. All right, however, what you do need to know is that it is more acidic than basic. All right, so 
it is more likely to do this than it is to do the one above. All right, but don't worry about too much. Uh, this is not really part of the syllabus too much. It is just that, well, everyone else had a chemical property, so I better do a chemical property as amides. That's why it's one here. All right, so that's it. We'll next move on to physical properties, which is even more tough. Ugh.